unless we weren't um, capable of doing it. So anyway, I think everybody I also that way. Say who, what? I'm sorry. No, Diane. Oh, no. oh, I was just gonna say that like when I think about like praying for like the unseen, I think sometimes it's it's like having the faith to say it out of my mouth when it's like, do I even really believe that it can happen? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, sometimes you sit there and you say like, okay, it's like the unseen. And then, and it's like, you're saying it's like, okay, I'm going to say it out of my mouth. But sometimes it's almost like, I don't know if it's like I get paralyzed about like even saying it out of my mouth because it's like, do I believe that I'm going to say it? But then you have to like sort of force yourself to say it because by saying it out loud, that sort of pumps you up. Huge. That's exactly that right. Sense? It does. Speaking it out loud. That's why it says all over in God's world to, I mean, in God's word to speak, speak to the mountain. And when Jesus was being tempted by the devil for 40 days in the desert, everything he did, he spoke God's word. He spoke scripture. Yeah. So there's, and I will say that I will say, sorry for interrupting. I know that like last, that one, when you were talking about like more spiritual stuff, like going a little bit deeper, but when my mom got sick, when she was in Idaho and we took her to like, my sisters took her to like every prayer lady and I mean people were praying over her and the one lady said to my mom she said don't let the enemy keep your mouth quiet Mm, because my mom's a prayer warrior right and sometimes it's like when you do that it's like it's almost like you don't want to say it out loud because I do really believe it versus like you need to say it out loud you know yeah Yeah. anyways yeah no that's Um, good because to say it out and my mom's been quiet time and that's the problem huh you're what i missed that i said my mom's been quiet like versus like knowing that she knows these scriptures and different things and she's and when the lady said that like don't let the enemy keep your mouth quiet like i am more than conquered and i don't care how my body's telling me i'm gonna feel i'm gonna do this and getting jacked you know and my mom's just sort of let that be quiet in her inner spirit uh, yeah yeah no that's it's good more like, so our, anyway. faith, our faith will come along with our words our faith really does because it says faith comes by hearing when you are yeah. saying god's word out of your mouth you're hearing it and your faith grows Faith comes by hearing. It's so important to keep speaking it, even if you're not believing it, because it'll finally get from your head knowledge down to your spirit heart knowledge. Mm -hmm. But it takes speaking it over and over again to get it to that place. It Mm -hmm. it just does. There's something about the power of your words affecting your spirit man within you. Judy, what were you going to say? I was just thinking about Diane's mom, and I, I remember you telling me she was such a warrior. Uh, it seems like the enemy has silenced her, and she lost her. So I mean, I also, faith is a fight, mm-hmm. you know? I mean, especially when you're, uh, when you're contending. Yeah. The, the enemy comes to steal, kill, rob, and destroy, and when uh, sometimes we have to fight for what the word says, we might not see it, we might not feel it, but if we repeatedly say it, we we get to be, we get to dominate the airwaves. Yeah. He's not, he's not the well, dominator. and I really feel like that's something that even in my own life, as far as in my family and stuff like that, like when you were talking about last week about it being more, so much more like spiritual and like so much more in that, because I've never felt like that really I can't remember I've always woken up and been boisterous with my mouth you know and then it's like because my thought pattern inside stays quiet and then I get paralyzed to speak it out of my mouth when that's the opposite so I really have to like no no uh uh-uh, not gonna happen you know and I'm like I'm like talking to myself people probably think I'm like you know but I mean I do I have to do it because 
I, I don't care how my body's telling me that I'm going to, I have to believe what God says I am. And I have to believe who yeah. I am through God. Yeah. So anyways, I have to jack myself up a lot. <laughs> good. But that's, I try good. anyways. <laughs> but it's good. It's good that you recognize that, you know, we all need to recognize I, that we need to recognize when we're going down into that hole that really most of the time it's only ourselves who can pull ourselves up. We yes. have to pull ourselves up. We have mm -hmm. to decide to choose joy over the problem. You know, I, I mean, and it's hard. I'm not saying it's not because I've been, I've experienced those dark holes and they're not fun. They are hard. They are hard, but you got to just go, you know what, God, you've done this for me before you're with me mm -hmm. now and we can do it again. And I'm going to hang on to your hand and we're going to ride this out, but we are coming out of this. My mom said a great mm -hmm. thing this week and it's really powerful. So I want all you guys to listen to this. It's very simple. Uh -oh. She said, because I've told you before, she kind of suffers from that dark kind of oppressive times in her life. And, or she also just, you know, here's the enemy. I mean, he's talking to us all the time. He's telling us, oh, you're not worthy or, oh, you better worry about that. Or what if that happens? Or he's always, he's just working, pick, 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 shooting those little darts. My mom said every single time she gets a little dart, a little word that she knows is not from God. She speaks out loud out of her mouth and she says, that's a lie. She just tells, and like she goes, that. I just talk to the enemy because I know who it's from. And I just say, that's a lie. And she said, it has been amazing. But every time she says it, right when she hears it, she doesn't let it manifest itself. She doesn't let it start sinking in and think about it. She just says, that's a lie. And she said, it, it is gone. She goes, it goes in instantly, it's good. you know, because Satan is the That's prince good. of lies. And I think when you're calling him out, he has nothing to do. He can't, he can't stand up against what you're calling him, which is truth. And mm -hmm. so he just, he departs. But I thought, how powerful is that? So I was doing it and it was working. It's like, it works. A couple mm -hmm. times I caught myself and just said, that's a lie from the pit of hell. And you just mm -hmm. get on back there because I'm not taking mm -hmm. it, you know? And I was it. just to Joyce Myers and she was saying that she was saying like, sometimes we want to focus on more about like what the enemy is saying versus like using the word of God in the scriptures and saying like, no, no, I'm favored. I'm blessed. I'm God's daughter. There's no weapon for him to get, you know what I mean? And using the scriptures because that is our weapon. It is. Yeah, right? that's good. And so it's like, we have to believe God over the enemy instead of being like this. She says, stop being a weak cup of tea and be a strong cup of coffee. You know, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it was funny. Hey, I'm good. like, okay, I'm going to be a bold cup of coffee. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. She's good. That's good. Anyway. Those so good. I mean, I mean, they're helpful. Soak I those things it. in because they help. You know, last week we yeah. talked about how God changes us from the inside out. And I gave a lot of examples of myself of condemnation of about unforgiveness. And I was just wondering if anyone wants to share anything that they felt that they recognized this week in themselves, maybe, um, Maybe that you have major insecurities and you were able to look back and go, you know what? I think I get how come my mom acts this way or <laughs> how come my dad was the way he was. Or maybe God showed you some unforgiveness that you had no idea. I mean, he showed me about a year ago some unforgiveness I had from these girls when I, that I went to college with that had really hurt my feelings. And I still had unforgiveness toward them. And it was so freeing to just go, God, you know what? I do forgive them. I forgive them. And I'm just giving them to you because who knows, you know, we're going through struggles all the time. Everyone has their own struggles and mm -hmm. how they manifest it onto others is not always good. And sometimes it's really ugly. And sometimes it's really painful for those who are the reciprocals of that, the reciprocants, mm -hmm. recipients, recipients. Um, so anybody have anything that they, Recognize this week? Wanted to share? No? 
Okay, because I was looking at James 5, and I love, I love James 5. It talks about how we can pray for each other and be healed. It also says that as you pray for others, that you too will be healed. And um, it also, well, let me read this. Um, James 5, 16 says, confess to one another, therefore your faults, your slips, your false steps, your offenses, your sins, and pray also for one another that you may be healed and restored to a spiritual tone of mind and heart. Because the earnest heartfelt prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available. Okay, that's kind of deep. I want to explain it real quick. So what he's saying right there is as we confess those things that we're recognizing in ourselves, those things that maybe we've held on to, worries. Worry is sin. Unforgiveness is sin. Um, anything that's not guilt is sin. If you're feeling guilty, it, all of the things that are not of God, that are not a characteristic, a characteristic of God are from the enemy. And when we have held on to them, they are sin in our lives because mm -hmm. we've chosen them over what God would ask of us to do or to receive. You know, if we receive self-control and kindness and gentleness and patience, um, those are what we're supposed to be. And if we're not, if we lack self-control, if we lash out, if we are short-tempered, if we don't forgive others easily, th that's all sin. So what they're saying in the scripture is you confess your faults. You confess, hey, I'm, I, have, I have claimed that I have, I'm not saying this myself, but I have a, a close relative that says, I am just short-tempered. I'm just short-tempered. My family's short-tempered. My mom was short-tempered. No, as yeah. long as you keep saying that, you will be because you are taking it. You mm -hmm. are receiving what you're speaking into your body. Mm -hmm. So- don't receive that. Don't continue to take those things on that you're not supposed to have, that God didn't give to you. Those are the things you got to get rid of. Those are things you confess to others and say, you know what? I have been short natured, short tempered. Pray for me. I don't want to be this way anymore. Mm -hmm. Or I've been judgmental. Judgmental. Judgment is sin. Help me to not be judgmental. Help me to not look with a critical eye at others. You know, as we confess these things one to another, it says that you would be healed and restored. And then it says, for the, for the prayers of a righteous man have tremendous power. Because when you are renewed, when you are willing to confess your weaknesses, confess your little sins, that we don't like to call sins, but you're willing to confess them, then you get into that place of righteousness. You are doing it as a right way of living, of God's right way of living. And when you're in that place of righteousness, righteousness, then your prayers become powerful. Then your prayers become powerful. If you can't confess to one another, confess to God. God showed me something this week and it was so um, revealing of me and I really didn't enjoy it much. And it was like, man, he's been making me jump through the hoops lately. And, and so I was driving and well, what happened was I was at that healing class that I've been going to. And the same lady who last week had told me that she asked me, do you have faith? And I got <laughs> offended. It was like, do I have faith, you know? And um, anyway, I ended up with that same lady this week in the class who we were supposed to pray for each other. And so she, I can tell she just tunes in. She listens to the Holy Spirit. She's quiet. And then she prays with the Holy Spirit, puts in her heart to pray. And she mm -hmm. said, I believe that you are a wonderful mother and that you need to be oh. a role model for your sons. That's they are good. looking to you and they need to see God in you. Okay. And wow. I'm like, well, that was wonderful and sweet. Mm -hmm. And I will take that and I will do it. And as I'm driving home, God shows me all the things, not all, because I think it would have overloaded my spirit, but he showed, it, it showed me a lot of things that I had not been a good role model. 
And you know, it was really interesting. It's like, wow, God, wow, wow. Um, and as I looked at each of these things, it was not that I felt, I wasn't getting beat up by God. God was being very gentle. He was being very sweet, but he was putting in my heart to ask for forgiveness for these things that I have done so that I can come into a clear place in my conscience and that stuff in the past that I wasn't paying attention to God when I did them, they would be clear. They would be wiped clean. And mm -hmm. so he showed me and I'm going to, I'm going to share. It's not, they're not very good, but I feel <laughs> like I need to share because some of you may still be walking in that place with your own kids. And um, I don't know, I feel like the Holy Spirit's telling me to share. So here we go. Um, so in high school, I got our boys, they were probably 15 and 18. I bought them flip flops with beer bottle openers on the bottom. <laughs> okay. I was like, that, you know, I, I was telling, I was telling Lacey about this and she like just kind of laughs. Oh, Sally. And I'm like, no, you know what? God showed me that there was some conviction there. And if I had been seeking him first, we are to seek him first in all things, mm -hmm. all things. And then he will give us the things we need. He will speak into us what we should be doing and what we shouldn't be doing, but we need to seek him first. Well, I didn't seek him first back then. And I'm not, I wasn't walking with him as closely as I am now, but oh dear, I still need to repent. Uh -huh. uh, uh, Oh gosh. Okay. So then he reminded me of other things. I don't need to tell you all of them, but one was not even that long ago that I bought my, my niece, a, a really cute um, country Western looking flask, a flask. I mean, I was like, Oh my gosh, God, you know, I just know that she goes to country concerts and I know she that she can put hot chocolate in it. Yes, exactly. It was for hot chocolate. Um, Wait, well, is she 21? No. No. Oh. That's where the conviction <laughs> comes. That's where God was showing me. He was like, Sally, because he's been dealing with my own heart lately for drinking. But mm -hmm. slowly, he's yeah. putting the layers off and showing me why he has been working on me. And it's because of things mm -hmm. in the past that I have let come mm -hmm. out of me and has affected others in not a godly way. Those aren't godly. That's so things. good though, Sally. Oh, it was so sweet. Well, thank you for saying that. And I hope some of you don't go, oh my gosh, I'm not going to listen to her anymore because she's like. <laughs> of course not. Are you kidding me? Uh, anyway, so then he showed me recently. This was just a couple of years ago and I was with, um, we were on a, a ski trip or a beach trip with our sons and their girlfriends. And now they're all close to 30 years old now, right? And still we were playing games and we were drinking wine and we had wine at the table and we're laughing and having a great old time. I mean, my husband has been in the wine business for 36 years. Um, mm -hmm. Anyway, I was drinking wine with them and we all went to bed and I woke up kind of feeling like a slight headache, not feeling so great and thinking, why did I do that? Why did I continue to drink wine? Well, God just showed me though, even in that place, I, I have to choose to be the role model. I have to choose to be the godly person in that. They can still drink. They can choose to do all that. But you know what? As long as they see the matriarch doing it, it really contributes to their own decision. Like if I had gotten up after a glass of wine or a couple glasses of wine and went and got sparkling water or something else, they would have noticed that. And they may have chosen that same path much quicker. Anyway, I'm just sharing this because it was such a yeah. sweet thing that the Lord showed me, but yet it really made sense in my heart. And it really made sense in my heart what that lady said, that I am still the role model. I am still the example for God to be able to use for others. 
whether it's in my own family, whether it's with my friends, whether it's with you, it's how I speak. Do I say swear words? Do I, you know, um, we are all representing Christ, mm -hmm. right? The Holy Spirit is within us. We are the, mm -hmm. we are the representation of him. And we need to start thinking in mm -hmm. with his mind. It tells us that we have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. The mind mm -hmm. of Christ will always lead us into holy things. He will always lead us into using his words, speaking life into situations. Um, so we need to be ready and willing to be transformed. He wants to change us. Just like that book I showed you earlier, Lord, change me. He wants to change us. Mm -hmm. It's not about the other person. He is perfectly capable of changing the other people. But for us, we have to allow him to change ourselves because we are walking with him. So um, let me see. I wanted to share with you something with this. Oh, so what else he showed me? Oh, okay. Let me go back real quick. My sister, um, I was talking about changing and healing the heart from the inside out and letting God um, letting God show you places, start being attentive to those little triggers, those little things that rise up and seek them out with God. He will start revealing just like me. Oh my gosh. He is peeling layers off from things. I would never thought of being convicted about those little flip flops with beer openers or whatever, but God took me there because he wanted to show me how I've evolved and mm -hmm. how I can have the, ch the, the choice to stop and to turn and face him and to evolve in the glorious way that he wants to evolve me. And he wants to transform and evolve each of you in a glorious way. We are to go, we are be, to be transformed from holy to holies, holies to holies. I mean, to glory, to glories, we are to be transformed, but we need to be paying attention. So my sister about two years ago came to me and she was telling me, she goes, Sally, I think I need for you to pray for me. She goes, I cannot cry. She goes, I haven't cried for years. And, and so I was really before I always said, let's pray about it. Let's ask God about it. Let's find out what's going on. And so I knew exactly because the Holy Spirit showed me. I said, Lacey, when dad left and divorced my mom and he left really suddenly, no one expected, she was seven and a half years old. I was mm -hmm. almost 19. Um, so I could see things differently. She had a broken heart. She oh. cried for days, days. And she wrote these little sweet notes to him and she put him in this little wooden box and she kept saying, daddy, please come back. When will you come back? Oh, you know, oh these little notes that would just, would just make your heart hurt. Oh. You know? And, and she cried for so many days. And I remember being the older sister and just feeling so bad, but I was going through my own tumultuous feelings about oh. my dad and what he was doing. And so anyway, I, I, brought this up to her and I said, Lacey, we have to go back to that place. We have to sit in that place and we have to let God heal that place and let, you know, let God take that so that you can cry again, but it's not for the tears of your father anymore because you have your heavenly father who mm -hmm. loves you more than anyone else in the whole world. And so we prayed and she was immediately freed. And I wish she was here tonight. I'll have her yeah. here with us next time. That's awesome. She, she, said, she was talking to me last week because we were talking about, we were sharing this after class. And she goes, oh my gosh, Sally, I cry over everything. I cry over a commercial. I cry over, yeah. a, she goes, I cry over everything. But, but it freed her. We're supposed to cry. Crying yeah. is okay. It says that you weep. Um, and if you're not crying, there's a reason why your tears are stopped. And that's just one little trigger of being able to seek God and ask, God, help me heal that wound, whatever it was. And he's so willing and he's so ready to heal it. Um, let's see, what did I want to share? Oh, uh, the other thing that was so interesting this week to me is 
Um, I, you know, we, I keep telling you, and I told you last week how I struggle with this dark cloud that comes around every now and then and how I rise up above it, kind of like what you were talking about, Diane. You know, we rise up and we're heroic and we are more than conquerors and we are victorious through Christ. And, and, you know, and I'm not having this dark cloud anymore because I broke it off with the power of the Holy Spirit within me and it will not come back on me and I'm going to cast it away. And you get all this strength. And then about whatever weeks or months later, there it is again. And so, and so I felt like this last, you know, couple of weeks ago, I was dealing with that again. And remember the Lord showed me control and how it had affected my mom and my grandma and, and mm -hmm. down you can listen to the message. Um, <laughs> that was good. Anyway, thank you. Thank you. Um, anyway, so I was driving. It was about a week after that. And this was just last week. And I was driving and I was asking God, okay, God, thank you. You know, thank you for showing me that. And thank you that I'm feeling so free of that little anxiety that wants to come like those little darts. And it has to do about my son's. And I said, thank you that I'm walking in your strength and I'm seeking your joy and I'm um, being thankful in all things and blah, blah, blah. But I said, but why? Why does it keep returning? Because I realized as I was praying and asking God this, that I felt like I was failing somehow. I felt like I was failing because if I prayed hard enough, this thing should stay away, right? He should be free of it. And you know what? He reminded me and showed me something that made such sense and really blessed my heart. And I feel so much better about how I'm going about my um, little darts. And what it was, it was John 16, verse 33, where it says, we will have trials and tribulations while we were on the earth but I have overcome come them. We will have trials and tribulations as long as we are on the earth, but Jesus has overcome them. And this is me adding on, and we can overcome them with the power of Jesus. Mm -hmm. But what God showed me is that I'm not going to be free of this. It's going to keep coming because that's how the enemy works. He's working on us because we're believers. He knows our weaknesses. And these are called familiar spirits. Familiar mm -hmm. spirits are in the Bible. They are spirits who have come down either through your family or they've been paying attention to you for a long time. Or you've opened up a little door somewhere and they've kind of inhabited a part of you and they know you. They are so familiar that's why they're called familiar spirits. They're so familiar with you that they know what pushes your buttons. And they're right there, ready to get in there if they see a weak moment. Like if they see me tell my husband, oh, I'm kind of concerned about the boys right now. Woo, they hear that. Okay, and they go, wow, this is my moment. I'm going to stick in the what ifs. Yeah, and what if that happens to them? And what are you going to do if they do this? Or that's when they attack. They listen. They're familiar. They know your life. And mm -hmm. so what the Holy Spirit showed me when I was driving is that, yeah, they're going to keep bugging you. They're going to keep bugging you. They don't just disappear and fall off the earth. No, they're still around. But it's our choice as to how we grow in faith and learn to conquer them. Because if we grow, if we continue to grow in our faith, if we continue to do what God tells us to do, to stand against the enemy, it tells us in James 4, verse 7, submit to God. That means do what God would tell you to do. Do what God would tell you to do. Submit to God, resist the devil, and he has to flee. Start using your weapons. Using, if you're really struggling against an attack that keeps coming back on you, then find your warfare tools. Go to Ephesians 6. Every day, put on everything, the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet mm -hmm. of salvation, the belt of truth, the shoes of peace, the sword of the spirit, and the um, shield of faith. 
and take them all and stand against him. But until we choose to grow in faith, the attacks can be to the strength that we are as weak in. Mm -hmm. However weak you are, that's how strong the enemy can be. The enemy mm -hmm. can only attack you if you open the door. So you got to start growing. And it was like, to me, it was like a revelation. It's like, wow, mm -hmm. you know what? You're right. Thanks, God. They are going to be coming back. But I am determined to be stronger every time. I am determined that when I'm going to start feeling that feeling, I'm not just going to lay down and go, oh, well, here comes the dark feeling again. Here comes mm -hmm. that oppressiveness that I always deal with. I got to start going back to the beginning and rising mm -hmm. up and say the right words. Get it right away. Just go, yep, I recognize it. And it's not well, well, just happen. like what your mom said, Sally, too. That's a lie. Yeah. That's a lie. That's Absolutely. A lie. Absolutely. Right. It says Second Corinthians 10, verse three, four and five. Take every thought captive that is not of God. He's telling you that because you have the strength to do it. Take the thought captive instantly that the dark cloud comes. I take that dark cloud captive and I am no longer having it. And I'm standing in the authority in the name of Jesus and I am casting it away. And you are not going to root down inside of me because I recognize you now and you mm -hmm. can come back, but I'm not going to take you. I'm not having you stand against it because Jesus told us we are going to have, as long as we're on the earth, we are going to have trials and tribulations, but yep. I, Jesus, have overcome, and then mm -hmm. we, it tells us we are overcomers. We are overcomers through Christ, who was the conqueror. So we have, it's telling you, you can overcome whatever the enemy tries to throw at you because of the power within you and the blood of Jesus. And mm -hmm. you know, the greatest word you can really say is Jesus. Amen. When you get that word, that attack, mm -hmm. Jesus, Jesus, mm -hmm. Jesus, Hallelujah. Jesus. Name above all names, name that every single knee has to bow is the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So you just, you take that word, you stand on it, and you get ready for battle. You don't go, oh, well, I prayed them all away. I'm not going to be in battle anymore. No, you're getting bigger and badder. And that's what you need to be. You need to be bad against the enemy. You need to be what Joyce Meyer says when, when, when you put your feet on the, uh, when you get out of bed and put your feet on the, on the foot of the, or on the floor, the devil should start trembling right then because mm -hmm. you are rising up. And you mm -hmm. are taking authority and you're not going to lay down and you're not going to claim those things that he's trying to put on you. Mm -hmm. And you know what, though? Your body, it's also a habit. You've got these familiar spirits that are working on you and just get them away. Judy, I'm snapping my fingers. I see that. <laughs> That's a good. I think it's effectual. <laughs> I think there's a time for that. I do. I'm going to snap mine too. Out, I'm going to snap out, mine out. too. If I can do that. Good. Dude, I'm Get gonna lost all day in the name of Jesus. I like it. Um, yeah. yeah. So like this, Sally. <laughs> attitude. That, yeah, yeah, have attitude. I remember my great aunt, I told you, the water walker, tongue talker, she just said, kick them to the curb. Don't even let them have attention. You know, don't let them be glorified. Don't let them bigger than be bigger than they are. They are never bigger mm -hmm. than the Holy Spirit who is within you. Yeah. Never. Put so on you, your fighting faces. Yeah, <laughs> fighting faces. So, <laughs> Sally, you're a church lady cheerleader. Go. Go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, we're about done. Let me just see if there's anything else. <laughs> So you got to keep growing your faith, you guys, and you yeah. got to keep reading God's word and you've got to um, put your faith in God, not in man. Even if man tells you something, if no, you're not worth it, or you could never get that job, you're not good enough, or the doctor tells you you've got an illness and it's not going to get better. It's only going to get worse. No, you just go, no, no, no. 
I am not doing it. I am walking who I am. <laughs> I'm more than a conqueror. I am above and not behind. Okay. I am seated in heavenly places with Christ. Wow. And because of what he did on the cross, I will not bow down and I will not take this any longer. And you walk in it. Okay? Amen. Right, pray. <laughs> you scared us into it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Dear Father, I thank you. I thank you for your presence. I thank you that you just changed up this class and you appeared in your most powerful and amazing way. And Lord, that you just spoke over all of us. You spoke through me, but you spoke into me and you spoke over all of these women and you told them who they were and the authority they have and that they are more than conquerors and that they are victorious and that they are able to arise above all that the enemy would try to, to cast upon them because of who they are. And they have the, the minds of Christ. Yes. And we are able to do all things through Christ who strengthens yes. us. All things through Christ. Yes. And we are able to take our captives thought, our thoughts captive. We are able to take our thoughts captive and cast them at the foot of Jesus. And we are able to speak life into our situations and we are able to believe in the unseen that the unseen will come to pass and lord god we just thank you that it's all from you it's all through your son who died on the cross and made it all available to us that we may be all on this earth and we can be and will be sound we will be sound in spirit soul and body in Jesus and Jesus name in Jesus name, you, in Jesus you, name. Amen. amen 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 stir ourselves amen. up time to stir ourselves up and get on our mean face yeah yes yeah. <laughs> and stamp our fingers yeah, yeah I like that <laughs> out of there yeah. <laughs> all right well, thank you Sally thank I love you, you all thank you Bye. 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 Hi everyone. Snap, Bye. Bye. snap, snap, snap. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great Good vacation. Night, Have Bye. a great Bye. vacation, Bye. Sally. Love Goodbye. you guys. Bye-bye. See you next week. Okay.